All right, here we go. We have iconic fashion designer Jeff Hamilton. Welcome to Vlad TV. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, man. I mean, you have so many iconic jackets, you know, that was worn by Kobe, you know, worn by Michael Jordan, as well as, you know, helping to start Guests for Men, uh, doing outfits from Michael Jackson to Drake to, to everyone else. You know, really definitely honored to have you here. I'm flattered that and proud to be here. I'm a big fan of yours as well. Thank you. Thank you. This is your first time here. I want to start at the beginning. So you're born in Morocco. Yes, I am. Okay. And then you moved to Paris when you were 10? Yes. Uh, okay. And, and are, are you Moroccan or are you... I'm, I'm, I'm actually Jewish, uh, born in Morocco. And uh, so during the Six-Day War, you know, my, my parents felt like we need to leave an Arab country, even though Morocco was a... It's a beautiful country and a very safe country, uh, and I, I'm still very proud of being born in Morocco. Uh, we moved to France, and uh, so I moved to France uh, from the age of 10 till the age of 24. Uh, did my studies in, in France, uh, mostly math and physics. Never never thought I was going to be in the clothing schmata business, and, uh, and I moved here. Uh, when I was 24, 25 years old. Aha. Uh -huh. What made you move over to the U.S. at that age? You know, I, growing up in, in as a kid in, in Morocco and in France, I always had the, the big American dream. I mean, I, I dreamt about everything about American culture. I mean, I was a big uh, uh, Lou Alcindor and Jerry West and Will Champion and fan. I love the fashion. Everybody that came to America always had to bring me some of those sweatshirts with those university logos. And I, I love the whole American culture. And if, you know, listen, it's, I'm, I'm born in 55. So the, the, for me, the sixties when I was growing up was like the heart of, of the Beatles and Rolling Stones and, and, and all the rock and roll. So for me, that was a very big influence in my life. Okay, and were you doing fashion back in Paris, or did that start once you got the No, US? I had no idea. I had no, I, I always loved fashion, and I love, I, I kind of consider that I had myself a good taste. But uh, no, when I moved to America, I knew I wanted to be in the fashion business, but I had no clue of where to even start. I didn't even know you even needed to make a pattern to make a, a pair of jeans or a shirt or a jacket. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I learned on, on the job. Okay. What were your first few jobs in fashion? Uh, when I came to America, I, I could not find a job. I mean, I really was, you know, I didn't, have, I was illegal. Hmm. I was already married with two kids. I mean, I married when I was 19. I had two kids when I was 24, 25 years old. I came into America with $6,000, rent an apartment actually not far from here. Uh, and, and I was looking for a job and Finally, I found a job as a, as a rep, selling from only in the jobbers, like sometime in downtown Los Angeles, uh, going from, from a jobber to another job, buying from this guy, selling it, making a couple of dollars. And uh, I couldn't work for anybody else, so I basically started doing it myself and picking up $2 here, $3 there. And, and my dream was always to go out and start designing something. And... Uh, so I started to like a couple of different product, you know, when Ralph Lauren was hot with the polo shirt, I came up with a, the same shirt and created like a company called Golf with a double F. And instead of having the polo player, I had a golf player on mm. it. And, uh, and then I met uh, the Marcianos in, in, in the 82 uh, and we became close friends and they had just started the company uh, Guess, and they had another company. They were a very, very small company. The whole company was like less than $2 million at the time. And most most of the business was done through their own stores, not even uh, uh, selling to the to, to the to the to other department stores. And uh, we started talking about me doing the men's. I knew the concept of licensing because in Europe, it's something that was very common. Though in the 80s, I mean, you would hear about licensing with Pierre Cardin and this and that, but he was not as as a big tool for business in, in America at the time, at least in the clothing business. And I offered them to take the license. And, you know, I just was able to negotiate some kind of deal and I got the license to do them guests for men. And I ended up being the first licensee ever for guest jeans. Okay, so that means that 
you had your own clothing line, but Guess allowed you to put their logo on these jeans and other right. you know, forms of cl- men's clothing. With a small difference, I didn't have my own clothing line. I just basically said, you know, I want to do whatever you guys do in women, I want to do in men's. And don't know how to design the line. Never been the design in my life. Huh. Let me figure out how to do it. So, uh, so they gave me the rights to, to put basically the logo against uh, a commission that I was giving them a royalty on everything that I was doing. Went through my closet look at that pair of jeans that I like or that shirt that I like or that jacket I like. And basically kind of like I say, well, I like that, but for my line, maybe instead of having the pocket that way, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it smaller. Maybe I'm going to add a piece of leather here. And as I started evolving, I became a designer by by necessity. I mean, I was a businessman first, but I became a designer by necessity. But huh. Okay. Though I enjoy more being the designer aspect of my life rather than the business part of, of it. Okay, so did you have to pay them up front to get this licensing deal, or is it just a strictly commission? There was, there was, there was a little bit of both. A little bit. There of was both. a little bit, but it was so my such a minor amount. I mean, if you in today's money, it's just it's it was nothing it was compared nothing. to. Okay, because I remember if you talk about the eighties, being a hip hop kid. Like the guest overalls were like like the hottest thing right. in you know in sort of urban I guess streetwear is what you would call it these right. days. Back then it wasn't called that. Were you responsible for that? Yes. So you did the guest overalls. I did the the, the women's had a guest overall, okay. but I did the men's overall. I did the I remember if you remember the flat pants, the jeans with the big flaps. Yeah. Uh, I did the jacket with the leather uh, on 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 the top with the jeans that had the leather on the back. The, I invented the leather with the jeans. And the women's company did it as well after after me. But we basically fed off each other, and you know, and uh, it, it was it was a very uh, it was a great moment because nobody at the time did anything crazy like we did, and uh, we were able to basically have such a an amazing penetration in the marketplace and the department stores. And the company blew from me starting the company in 1983, uh, January 15, 1983. Uh, to January uh, of 1985, uh, on January 1985, doing $75 million in sales. Wow. Some $22,000 uh, two years prior to that. And in the meantime, I got my green card, spoke a little bit better English, but, you know, <laughs> not as speaking well English now, but at least, you know, at, at the time I was, you know, not speaking well at all. Well, yeah, and I mean, during that time, Guess really established itself as like really one of the hottest brands at we that were. point. I remember even like like rappers were, you know, Easy E was mentioning Guess. Yeah, you know, he knocked the pig in the head for ripping his Guess. Like, you know, like you started to see it really penetrate into yeah. really what was hot, and everyone had to wear Guess jeans. Like I said, if if you didn't really wear the overalls, you definitely had a pair of jeans. Yeah, or, sure. And I remember the stores and the malls and everything. No, so, I remember Carl Lewis, you know, was the hottest thing in the 1984 Olympics. I mean, he was wearing gas everywhere he went. So, right. And, right. and you know, it's not like they were coming in and getting it for free. Everybody was going in the stores and buying it, you know. So it's because there was not much other choices. I mean, there was like, you know, the, those amazing brands and all nothing but respect to, to Levi's and Wrangler and Lee. But. Those were the brands. And Sassoon and Jordache were great brands as well, but they were like more, you know, they're more more feminine. They were not as as hip as where we were because we basically went a level above. And besides that, we were much more expensive than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And and the quality was stood behind it. And it was a lot of passion, a lot of hard work that made uh, the brand on my end, and then and the, the woman's brand. Even though we didn't get along, uh, mm-hmm. they did an amazing job as far as creation and advertising and and putting us on, on putting everybody on the map. That we we made a difference in in the in the culture. 